What's up everybody, Andy here, and welcome back to Kit Guru. So today we're checking out a system by Box called the Titanium X system. So get ready to hold your breath and watch the moths fly out of your wallet though, as this beast comes in at a hefty 3,000 379.99. Now, as you can imagine, there's pretty good reason as to why this system is so expensive. And yet, you've guessed it, that's because it's got some seriously enticing specs here. But is it really worth nearly three and a half grand? Let's find out. So don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button as it really helps support all of us here at Kit Guru for free. Of course, you probably know that part prices have been ridiculous for the past year and a half, and because of that, many builders, including myself, have resorted to buying pre built for the first time, as buying a pre built is pretty much the only guaranteed way of getting your hands on some of the latest and greatest components. Some people simply don't have the time or ambition to build systems themselves, and as such, gravitate to pre built anyway. Whether you build or buy pre built, either way, there's no right or wrong answer, right? So let's dive in head first into the specs that you will get for $3,379.99. And that will get you a Corsair 5000X case, an AMD Ryzen 9 5900X, a Corsair H150i Elite Capellix RGB 360mm AIO cooler, MSI Mag X570 Tomahawk Wi-Fi motherboard, Corsair RGB Pro SL 32GB at 3200MHz RAM, Corsair 1TB MP600 NVMe Gen 4 M.2 SSD, a Seagate 1TB HDD, MSI RTX 3080 Ti Gaming X Trio 12GB, Corsair RM850 Watt PSU, Corsair SP120 RGB Elite 120mm fans, braided cable extension kit, Windows 10 Home, and a Windows 10 recovery USB. Now you can see why the system is so expensive. On paper, there's some very enticing specs here that look like they will absolutely eat up the latest games and tasks that you throw at it. But of course, in true Kit Guru fashion, we'll be putting it through its paces later on within the review. Starting with the build itself, the mid-tower Corsair 5000X case that Box have chosen for the system is quite a beast. Pretty much from any angle you look at it, is black tempered glass from both sides and the top and the front. Now what I like is that you can very easily remove the top and front glass panels just by gently pulling on them. Removing them lets you get to the dust filters which is a good touch. With the glass on there's still a good inch or so gap between either side for airflow. The back cover has a large ventilated area for the side fans if you decide to install any in the future. We get a good selection of front I.O. on the case too with a USB 3.1 Type-C, two USB 3.0s and a combo audio jack. Taking the side panel off reveals just how much space there is inside, but it certainly doesn't look empty with wasted space here as the MSI RTX 3080 is a massive card, especially with a large bracket underneath it to try and help the inevitable dreaded GPU sag. The bracket does pretty well though, and the GPU only starts to sag at the very end where it's mostly unsupported. The drawback here is if you want to install another card of some kind, let's say an internal capture card, then that GPU support bracket may need to be removed to get the card in, and depending on the card size, it may not fit anyway as the 3080 Ti is so large. The other reason the case doesn't look so bare is the massive Corsair H150i Elite 360mm AIO orientated at the top of the case. With the tubes coming down on the right hand side, this helps to detract from the large empty space behind it. So despite that large AIO on the top, the case is big enough to still give you ample room to access the top of the motherboard easily, and I really like that as often top mounted AIOs end up covering the top of the motherboard, and it always looks a little bit too close for comfort in my opinion. Theme wise, the continuity here is great. Everything continues on nicely from the black frosted glass of the case. Inside are MSI board, graphics card, RAM, fans, SSD, heatsink, and AIO are all black, but of course, 
almost everything has a splash of RGB if desired. On the front of the case, we have three Corsair SP120 RGB Elite 120mm fans and another on the back exhausting. Our AIO fans look to be the same too, and they are also exhausting. Management wise, in the front, everything has been installed well. I had no issues when turning the system on for the first time. Cables are super neat and tidy with the inclusion of those nice braided and combed black extension kit for both the motherboard and the GPU. Even the Corsair MP600 SSD looks great in center place with the black Corsair heatsink on show. You can see care really has been taken here to make this system look as nice as possible with no twisted or bent cables. On the flip side, taking the back panel off, we see the case has a nice cable shroud making the system look even cleaner and I like that a lot. It's a swing door design and opens easily to reveal the back of the motherboard and the cable management. On the left hand side, you can see there's space for three extra fans, but this is empty currently. Personally, I'd probably just remove this metal bracket and leave it off so that the drive bay is more easily accessible, but that's just personal preference. Cable management is great here. They've utilized the case's large Velcro straps and plenty of cable ties have also been used to keep it tidy. You can also see that the large Corsair fan controller is in the middle, helping to tidy up the front of the system right up. Excellent all round here. And finally on the bottom, we have our Corsair Corsair RM 850 watt power supply. Overall, the entire build is very well done. It's super clean and well managed. Everything looks like it has a purpose without anything being mismatched or misplaced. I really like how accessible everything is too, from the top of the motherboard to the fan controllers on the back. As mentioned, the only thing I would do is remove the fan bracket on the back if I wasn't going to use it. Okay, so let's get to it, shall we? Tests and results. So starting with our CPU tests, I put our Ryzen 9 5900X through its paces first. So Cinebench R20 scored 8807 during our multi-core tests and 628 in the single core. Cinebench R23 scored a whopping 22,617 during multi-core and 1616 within our single core test. Time taken to render our BMW CPU test within Blender 2.93.1 was super fast at just 110 seconds or 1 minute 50 seconds. PC Mark 10 shows how well the system performs at a variety of tasks and where it excels, scoring very well across the board, but really excelling in the digital content creation tests. As expected, our 5900X really did well here, and that's what we were hoping to see. To test our 32 gigabyte RAM at 3200 megahertz, we put it to the test within ADA64, where it scored really well and consistently within all three benchmarks here. Moving over to Crystal Dismark to test our Corsair MP600 PCIe Gen 4 NVMe SSD, we reached just shy of 5,000 megabytes per second read and close to 4,300 megabytes per second write speeds. Despite the fact that these speeds are actually faster than Corsair's own claims for the drive, we would have really liked to have seen a second generation PCIe Gen 4 NVMe drive here because the MP600 is actually a first generation, so a second generation PCIe Gen 4 drive is actually capable of up to 7,000 megabytes per second, and that would have been really nice to see here. So this is a little bit of a downside when considering the price of this build. I'll cover temps, wattage, and noise last, so let's check out our beefy RTX 3080 Ti GPU results. Starting with synthetic benchmarks, 3D Mark Firestrike performed well whilst excelling during the graphics portion of the test. 3D Mark Firestrike Ultra saw performance dip down as expected since it's more strenuous. 3D Mark Time Spy performed well too, and of course dipped down during our Time Spy Extreme benchmarks. Now let's move on to some real world gaming examples. I tested at both 1080p and 1440p with the highest presets available, with any adaptive resolution scaling turned off and VSync off too. All games were installed on the Corsair MP600 SSD as well. 
So Forza Horizon 4 Ultra preset with dynamic optimization and V-Sync set to off was clearly no match for the 3080 Ti, getting above 200 FPS and 1080p, and not too far behind that, of course, in 1440p as well. I'd rather take that small hit of performance myself and play at 1440p personally. The Division 2 is usually quite a tough one on cards, but here at 1080p we saw a really high score, the same average as Forza in 1080p, but you can see it starts to struggle at 1440p with quite a hit to our FPS here. Nearly 140 FPS is no mean feat though, and playing in 1440p is very enjoyable without any dips in frame rate. Resident Evil 2 Remake was really a breeze for our 3080 Ti, pushing above 350 FPS at 1080p and more than 250 in 1440p. That's excellent, and the results are as expected really as this game isn't as demanding as others. Now a game that is demanding is of course Shadow of the Tomb Raider. On Ultra with VSync off, we only just breached 150 FPS at 1080p and only just kept our heads above 100 FPS in 1440p. 40p, but still both resolutions were enjoyable to play in. Lastly, our final game of course is Doom Eternal, set to Ultra Nightmare, V-Sync Off and Res Scaling Off 2, and as you probably expected, we almost got to that 400 FPS mark at 1080p and just hit above 300 FPS at 1440p for the first time during our game results. Overall, great results from our system here, and despite the expected dips at 1440p, I would say that that's where this system really shines. However, if you do fancy yourself as a competitive gamer, then at least you have peace of mind that this system can pretty much wipe the floor with any modern game at 1080p. Temp-wise, our Ryzen 9 5900X remained relatively cool, even when gaming and being pushed by Cinebench R20. It's been fairly warm here during the summer too, so those results are really good. The same can be said for our GPU temps, keeping below 80 even after all our strenuous game tests. Wattage wise, we idle just above 100, but when gaming, you can see it jumps right up to 574 watts when the system is at full load. Now, luckily, we have plenty of headroom with our 850 watt PSU here. Lastly, noise wise, I was pleasantly surprised even at its loudest, it still remained quieter than my own lesser power system, and it didn't bother me whatsoever. Now, before I give my conclusion, I did want to see how much this system would cost if I built it myself. So bear in mind that it's probably not overly possible to find some of the components, but I thought I'd give it a go anyway. On PC Parts Picker UK, I managed to get almost everything on there, and that totaled £3,142.86 versus boxes £3,379.99. That's a difference of £237.13. However, that's excluding the cable extension kit. Now these can be found anywhere from sort of 20 to 50 pound, along with the time taken to actually build the system. And of course, the biggest thing is the fact that box system comes with free delivery and even better yet, three years collect and return warranty. So let's say you're paying around a 200 pound premium to have box expertly put this system together, have it delivered to your door and ready to go and have the peace of mind of having three years warranty. Now I think that premium is definitely worth it. But again, then it all depends on your situation and whether or not you care about the luxury of convenience or saving a few quid. If you do want to save a bit, then Box do offer some customization of the build on their website, letting you select different CPUs, RAM, GPUs, etc. Now, the last thing I want to say, which is in relation to performance and also price, which is a massive factor here because this is a very expensive system, is the fact that the 3080 Ti, which has been chosen for this system, is a very expensive card and it's not actually that much faster than a 3080, which is a lot cheaper. Now, Dominic has done a very in-depth review of the 3080 Ti and comparing it to the 3090 and also the 3080. And his conclusion was that the 3080 is the better choice, especially because the 3080 Ti is so much more expensive. So I would advise you to go and check out that review on kitguru.net. However, if we actually go to Box's configuration website and change this system from having a 3080 Ti down to 
a 3080, we can actually save another 250 pounds. So that is quite a lot of money there that you could be using on peripherals or on a brand new monitor or something else. So please do consider that and make sure you check out Dominic's review of the 3080 Ti to see an in-depth explanation of why the 3080 may be a better choice. So in conclusion, I've thoroughly enjoyed testing out the Titanium X system from Box. Aesthetically, it looks smart and stealthy, unless you turn the RGB on, and then it's still smart, but it's just not so much as stealthy. It's very well put together and cable managed. All the part choices complement each other with no real compromises for the price bracket, as everything is by respected brands. Performance throughout our testing held up great with nothing noticeably letting the system down. The only real negative really, as mentioned earlier, is the lack of that second generation PCIe Gen 4 NVMe. If Box had chosen to use the Corsair MP600 Pro, which only costs around £20 more, however it gets speeds of up to 7,000 megabytes per second, that would have really been what we expected to see for the price of this build. I also think the approximate £200 premium of having Box build the system is acceptable given the level of care and detail they I've put into the build, along with that free delivery and the three-year warranty. So is it expensive? Yes, but this isn't a budget build. This is aimed at those seeking the best performance and the best components, and if you're looking to spend nearly three and a half grand, would I recommend the Titanium X by Box? Well, yes, yes I would, and would I recommend dropping it down and saving another £250 if you are trying to save a little bit of money by selecting that 3080 instead? Well, yes, I probably would as well. So that is our review of the Titanium X system by Box. Will you be buying one? Let us know down in the comments. Make sure you check out our merchandise down below. Check out our website daily for tech reviews and news. And I'm Andy, this is Kit Guru. I'll see you in the next one.